One thing 2022 did not bring was an end to COVID. In fact, by some measures, it's as bad as ever. So what do we expect from this endemic in 2023? Isaac Bogosh is an infectious disease specialist at the University Health Network. Thanks for being with us. My pleasure. So not only is COVID still with us, very much so, uh, we're still seeing deaths from COVID. Uh, in, in, in fact, some would say that's as bad as it ever was. So how would you rate our progress through this pandemic or endemic? Yeah, in all fairness, I don't think it's as bad as it ever was. I think we're in a much better place right now than we were in 2020 and in 2021. When we look at the whole year of 2022, yes, of course, uh, at the, the the beginning of the year started off on a very rough note. We were this time last year, we were in the midst of one of our largest waves ever with the, some of the highest rates of hospitalization. But after that wave, which started to peter out in tail end of January and February. Uh, we've actually been in a much better place since then. Of course, it's still here. Of course, we need to pay attention and take it seriously. But we've had two subsequent waves that were much smaller than that wave. Deaths have come down dramatically as well. So, you know, it's here, but it's not as bad as it once was. Oh, that's the good news. We do, of course, have uh, two things that may throw us off the rails a little bit. And I want to talk first about this new variant. Uh, we'll go by its code name Kraken because the, uh, the uh, name that doctors use is too complicated. But sweeping across North America, do we need to worry about this new one that seems to be taking over? Yeah, so this is referring to what's called XBB 1.5. Uh, certainly is seen with greater prevalence in uh, the United States, found in over 30 countries around the world. And again, we should always take it seriously. We should never sweep this under the rug, but we should also acknowledge too that, for example, in Canada, we have a very highly vaccinated population. Yes, there's room for improvement on boosters with more vulnerable groups, but in general, we're doing okay. Plus, the vast majority of Canadians have sadly been infected and recovered from infection. And while we don't want people to be infected with this, we can still acknowledge that it's happened. And that combination of hybrid immunity has really protected us through mm -hmm. more severe manifestations of waves uh, after the winter of 2022. Uh, so yeah, while this might be around and while this might spread and while this may cause a bump in hospitalizations and sadly a bump in deaths, I think we're still in a much better place because of the community level immunity that we've built along the way. Look at China right now. They don't have that same degree of hybrid immunity that right. we have. And, and unfortunately, they're, they're just getting throttled. Well, and just uh, not, not a ton of time, but that was my next question. Is, do we need to worry about China? It has reopened. It has rampant COVID. Uh, do we worry about a variant coming from there and literally traveling to our shores? I think a variant can emerge anywhere on the planet, as we've seen it emerge in the United Kingdom, in India, in Southern Africa. And now there's just more opportunities for variants to emerge in other parts of the world with 1.4 billion people more at risk of getting this infection. So this can happen anywhere on the planet, China included. Quick question, uh, putting you on the spot. Is there a day in the future when we say goodbye to COVID? Does it ever disappear the way SARS did, for instance? No, COVID is here for a long, long, long time. Uh, it will impact us less and less if all goes well as we move forward. But I think it's still fair to communicate uncertainty in the months and years that lie ahead. Isaac Bogosh, great to have you with us. My pleasure. Dr. Isaac Bogosh is an infectious disease specialist at the University Health Network. Time for the takeaway and when chaos gets political. Traveling this holiday season became a nightmare for many as volume of travelers collided with extreme weather. The result was a hectic few days and for an unlucky few, an outright disaster. Some Canadians found themselves stranded on foreign soil for the Christmas holiday as Sunwing Airlines found itself in a catastrophic situation. It was in some ways similar to the plight of thousands of Southwest air travelers as that discount airline hit such a snarl it actually shut itself down for a few days to reboot. The timing was awful for many who were trying to be with loved ones during a holiday break, but the outrage that has now followed may be a tad overdone. That includes the federal chair of the Transport and Infrastructure Committee, who is now calling for a parliamentary review of what happened to Sunwing, and also to Via Rail, which saw extreme disruption after a tree fell on one of its trains during an epic December 24th snowstorm. Via says it's happy to testify, and no doubt that will be a short, if not sweet, hearing. Bad things happen, and in that case, it would be hard to blame the rail company. Where the travel firms find themselves on less firm footing is how they react to these events, including not having a plan to move people somewhere, including hotels in Mexico, if that's where they're stranded, and not reimbursing them faster. 
But where political jawboning won't help is with our expectations of just-in-time living. One of the reasons Southwest and Sunwing fell apart in such spectacular fashion is that they operate using sophisticated software that allows them to have planes only exactly where they're needed. That saves time and money, and that's passed on to the customers in cheaper fares. When a big enough storm keeps enough planes from getting around, the whole network fails. Is that unfortunate? Of course. But it is also foreseeable and in some ways part of the bargain we've made in exchange for the fare. My takeaway, we should be vigilant about travelers' rights and make sure travel firms aren't taking advantage of us. But let's not oversimplify a relationship that is complex by nature. That's Taking Stock for this week. I'm Amanda Lang. Thanks for being with us.